<clears throat> okay, well, very bad way to kick us off. So, um, Velocity, it was uploaded a couple minutes ago. Um, to be fair, um, I actually did a voiceover for that, like, two hours ago. It's, yeah, like, two hours ago. So, yeah, the Nets have now just defeated the Hawks, 110-105, so that's awesome. Anyway, main event for SmackDown here tonight, Champion versus Champion Action. SmackDown's Warrior Champion, Aris the Black, faces off against, well, the NXT Champion, Mr. Perfect, who is also accompanied to the SmackDown brand. So, like I said on Velocity, uh, Money Bank qualifications, no segments, no Pacific promos will be made on this episode. In case you guys will be wondering, because I actually do add in, like, a segment on that, or sometimes I usually don't, but sometimes, but if I don't, I am going to nog shit. If I feel like I'm spoiling and stuff, even though I'm not really... At least I feel like I am, but probably not. I'm, I'm not fully sure. Anyway, first money bank qualification here tonight. First of four to happen tonight, and then the next episode of SmackDown there will be two, and then after that, well, when we have when we have those our two qualification matches, that'll be the go home show. So yep, go home show will be the next episode of SmackDown. So anyway, if you guys do hear background music, um, that is like, well, one of my Spotify plays playing, playing. Um, so hopefully you don't hear that. I'm playing that in the background on the Chromebook. I was able to connect it to my phone's account, but I just think I. But since like this whole Chromebook is like Android type controlled, I was able to sync it in with the iPhone. So that that was cool. But like I already knew I could do that. But um, I I don't know. So if I do, I don't know. But if I do get copyright, and if you guys do hear this in the background, if I do get copyright, if I do get copyright strikes, because all these are like copyright free. I mean, all these are, like, copyright songs, mostly. And then they're, like, some of them that are, like, from Montage Rock, which are not copyrighted, which are uncopyrighted, depending on its date and for when the bands actually get labels, I guess, for some of the uncopyrighted ones that will be from a long time ago. So, hopefully. But I highly doubt since, like, there have been many videos where I've checked to see if there are copyright claims on that. Well, I haven't checked, but I'm guessing that it probably weren't. I'm not sure. Can you even check? I'm not even, I'm not even sure. But where there would be like some copyright music playing in the background. And the copyright strike probably wouldn't have happened. Because, you know, you can barely hear some of that. So, yeah. Hopefully that hopefully that's the case. Because that's actually what's the case for <clears throat> my triple threat. 30 championship matchup. For to hype up for the life on the MSG. Join Brandon Ross. Man, don't need to W. Pay-per-view on week 8 for Raw's Pacific triple threat main event. So, yeah. And I was able to sync in some... Um, copyright rock music in that, and so it didn't get didn't didn't get copyright striked. But then when I did the when but then when I added that same promo clip to the actual part of the show, um, that's when it actually did. But it's like copyright claims so that so it's not all that serious. <clears throat> just gonna take away revenue for the money I make, which to be fair is just really a couple of cents. So it doesn't really matter. I haven't gotten the paycheck. Probably not even, but still. Anyway, so my main qualification matchup. First one here tonight, Samoa Joe, Curse Axel. Um, Axel, he's our resident SmackDown jobber, same like Damon Sandow, and his Raw's resident jobber, and ECW's resident jobber is Hurricane Graven Helms. But now, we're going to give them a chance here. We've, give, we've given them the equal amount of attributes as every R superstar, which is 99% everything in popularity. Even speed, so stuff like that. So we got more competitive matches, pulls off, pulls off more greater star ratings, especially in AEW career mode, which I probably haven't done in like probably two weeks now. Well, at least it could be two weeks, or it's probably like still a week, but probably very close. I currently got Papa Roach playing in the background, so that's cool. Next up will be Rise Up, which will be the 2007 SmackDown theme. Ironically enough, in this playlist, so I did a good job doing this whole playlist. Then we got the unreleased version of Seth Rollins' new theme song for, re for Resign, Rebuild, Reclaim by Downstat that though they never borrowed to use but does fit Rollins because he does like male music and so do I somewhat I mean, like a turn this rock bar and that's exactly what's played as a turn this rock for the most part someone copyrighted rock okay anyway so Joe, the Donald stretch, now it's Curse Axel on nowhere. I just turned around from the computer and whoa, okay, nice transition. I like that. Reverse suplex. And Samoa Joe nailing the damn swan ton Curse Axel. My boy Samoa Joe pulling out all the stops to qualify for the money in the bank. So, if you guys do know for the GWE universe, 
a universe that I actually had high hopes for, like last year. I started in like April or May last year. January, February, March, April. I think I started in like March, April, or May. That's when I started the GWE Universe and Book Revolution. Um, it was somewhat bad, so yeah. But we for SC Raiders Mojo, he's going to advance on to Money Bank. He's the first entry in the Money in the Bank. Not a match. Six man, not a match. And they could cash in the Money in the Bank contract anytime they please. Specifically, SmackDown Superstars. But it's going to be cut bound for glory since when TNA still has that bound for glory pay view. But like for one of their ones in like what, 2008, where they had the King of the Mountain match. That what was that what it was called? Where it had like what Krangle Book T Robert Rude, aka Bobby Rude, and um who else? Was it Samoa Joe? I think it was Samoa Joe. I'm not sure if Jeff Jarrett was involved in that. No. He was involved in something else, I think. But since he is called the King of the Mountain, so I guess I guess that's why it like rolls off the tongue very easily. To you think of Jeff Jarrett when you think of that pay-per-view, I guess? Well, when you think of that specific matchup at that pay-per-view, which is really, like, the only, like, matchup I actually barred. Well, it's, like, the only full show I actually barred to watch from Bound for Glory. For TNA Pacific, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure, but I just specifically remember that, so I'm thinking Mind Bank to connect it, since I don't like the regular name of Mind Bank, and I don't like the fact of doing Mind Bank at WrestleMania. I like that, but, you know, we're going to end it off at WrestleMania. Who we can? No, we're not. We're going to end it off what most of the pay-per-views in WWE in a year differential ended off back in the Ruthless Question era, which the era I grew up in, from like, what, it lasted from like 2002 to 2008. Most people said it really ended in like 2010. It definitely wasn't around in 2011. And 2011 sucked. I hate 2011. And I was only like 7 or 8, depending on the month. Um, but anyway, second one event qualification matchup, Antonio Cesaro, or I guess we could just call him Cesaro, but he is called Antonio Cesaro in our AAW career mode, where we, like, you know, have a more easier to control roster. And now it's playing Rise Up by Drowning Pool. Smackdown tells and sound vibes right here. How can I remember this nostalgia, even though if I was just three or, or four years old, depending on the month differential again? Okay, I'm just going to try not be quiet, so you guys, I don't hear it in the background. And I have it at, like, the lowest volume it could, and I clearly hear it in those, like, right next to me. But still, it's, I don't know. Anyway, so, for the AEW career mode, I will go back to do an episode of that. I'm not sure if I want to just finish, like, this whole specific week of AEW career mode. I'm not fully sure on that part. I'm even struggling to, like, do superstars and stuff, but... Still need to do the monthly live tour house show highlights, I guess. We did we did the December eighth one. Well we did the December well, we did the first month one on December eighth. And now Cesaro now the elbow drop right to Kobe Kingston off the off the top rope. Kingston, of course, allied with our truth, New Day. Except with Biggie specifically just dumb. We're not gonna add in Kofi or Truth to them yet. Keywords yet, or probably maybe never in the Kofi belongs there, but no, I'm too lazy to. I see your power drive from Cesaro. Now, Cesaro, this man has been on a roll as of late. Um, I'm not sure what he did in week 11. I don't think we had him on show in week 11 of SmackDown, but I know in week 9 and week 10. Or, or did we have him on week 11? I don't know. But, like, for his two matches, he defeated number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship since week 8. Dolph Zitter, Dolph Zitter, of course, had an awesome five-star matchup in my books. It was an awesome 20 minutes back and forth contest. The third ever one-on-one meeting between Sigler and Ryback. The fourth ever meeting between them. Regularly, but the third, but their actual third ever meeting was against Aster Black. And that triple dragon, of course, Aster Black won the World Hotel. And that was dating all the way back to week six in the SmackDown No Surrender pay-per-view. And then week 8, stuff like that, we just have no one contenders matchup because we're not going to be able to have enough build-up for the whole World of Tower thing. And it was an awesome back and forth contest down from that. So Sigler, he's been no one contender for a while until, of course, SmackDown's next pay-per-view, which is going to be now week 13. So, yeah. Raw is going to have theirs on week 12. ECW have theirs on week 14. So then after that, we're going to have, like, another 3-4 month differential. I'm probably going to shrink it down to 3 just so we could deliver these pay-per-views faster. So it could be easier, I guess, for me to, like, quickly end off the series and think of something else to do. I don't know, perhaps, like, an actual edited humor mode where I edit the matches, like, for the Book Revolution, I mean, for the Wrestling Revolution 3D Story Mode, I guess. 
and which I haven't done a video about in like probably two weeks where we do have like eight matches on each pay-per-view and just gonna be pay-per-views or could we actually like have a whole like regular Raw Smackdown show I guess or like should I just no cuz it's like join brand there's no Pacific Raw or Smackdown show so we could like have just a regular superstars type show I guess main event uh, I don't know. Anyway, now, well, Cole Kingston, he's on the verge of getting eliminated here. Well, by getting eliminated, well, by getting eliminated, I mean count out here. On count eight, makes inside ring on the count of nine. And now, well, Cesaro. Um, so, if you guys don't want to hear spoilers, not for this humorous mode, but for the AAW career mode where I, like, play as Triple H and I'm the GM and stuff. Screw you, Vince. Um, screw you, Vince, man. So, essentially, like, I book some stuff the way I want it to. I'm going to take out some, like, nostalgic type legends, like Mankind, since he doesn't really fit with that current roster that we necessarily have. So, yeah, but we probably might get some other ones for use doing it. Uh, I, I don't know. It is a mess, though, somewhat. But, next pay-per-view is going to be fascinating. So, anyway, those next spoilers. Spoilers basically essentially cover yours in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right now, if you don't want here, don't worry. It's just who won the Royal Rumble for the AEW career mode, which was Antonio and Cesaro. It was a 25 minute Royal Rumble match, um, so yeah. We didn't put 30 because then it would take forever to actually pick the characters, unlike Wrestling Revolution 3D, where you could like type, where you could like, um, um, tap their names and change it, which makes it an easier format, unless, unlike Book and Revolution 2D, where you gotta actually tap the character models and they're all like squished together the more characters they are. So like 30 was too much, 25 I barely did it. And so if you like try to do 50, well then, good luck with that. So yeah, it was what I just did, 25, Cesaro came in at number what, he came in at number 20, 21, and he won the thing. Shortly after losing his United States Championship to Adrian Neville, the man he originally won it from in AAW Episode 1, I believe. And so Neville, he got payback and won his title back. And then Cesaro, well he won up Snow by winning the Royal Rumble. So that, so that, that was cool, and he won the Royal Rumble later on the night as well. Shortly after using his newly won United States title to, well, the man he defeated, Adrian O. Of course, Cesaro was the heel for that. Um, Noah was the face, so yeah. This is Cesaro and Cove Kings match. We've gone on a while here. Anyway, now, well, Kings did a nice counter with the side how to take down. Can he steal one here against Cesaro? Not only has Cesaro defeated off Ziggler, who is no one contender for Warrior Tao, who will face out against Ash Black for the Warrior Tao. At Battle for Perry, we have not had Ziggler in, in a couple episodes. I believe we haven't had him since, like, week 9, week 10. So, yeah, but I remember in the beginning of the series, we were building the whole series, the whole SmackDown series, off of Ziggler. And so we had him, like, every matchup on the show, and how he, like, he was, like, he went to, like, being 3-1 and one and stuff like that. So, yeah. It, it, was, it was going well for Ziggler. Been having a whole lot of good matches. All his matches against Ryback have been great. Ryback will be inside the main bank qualification matches uh, later on, I guess. No, not I guess. It's literally written down on, in my notebook. Of match cards. I legit got three different notebooks for different YouTube ideas. Like the first notebook here is just a whole bunch of random well not a whole bunch of random stuff. Anything's just match cards for the whole pay-per-view because I don't write write down notes on my phone since I'm too lazy to type it's easier to write. Not to mention I could think of it more quicker. Second notebook, um I don't know, this is like for the Western Revolution 3D stuff which I can never make up my mind if whether if I want to start a new series or not. And then the third one is just, I don't know, some ideas for the second channel. Which I already have some ideas for. I'm going to do Royal Rumble pay per view predictions and the five custom um, pay per view posters, like what I do on my regular channel. Well, like what I sometimes do for like every couple months, I do somewhat if I feel like it. So yeah, I'm going to do that on the second channel. I originally did like main event 100 episode highlights back in 2014. Well, back from the 2014 episode of the main event for the other day and stuff. That got like 18-something copyright strikes. And so it got blocked in 188 countries. So, yeah, that, that didn't work out well. That that didn't work out well. But also, I mainly delayed that because I don't want to risk nothing. But it's a copyright claim and not strike. Because then when I check the copyright notices, it says I have zero. Community guideline strikes, zero copyright strikes. So that was a claim, but that was a huge as hell claim. 
this matchup's been going on forever here. Now, Kingston trying to catch Cesaro does with that cross by. Can he pick one up here? No. Cesaro, resilient as hell. Well, he did. Well, Cesaro, he also. Well, going back to what I was talking about, Cesaro, well, at least what I was trying to before I kept getting sidetracked by all the random stuff. Cesaro, he did actually defeat the World Trade Champion, Aster Black. On the next episode of SmackDown, after he defeated Dolph Ziggler, so he defeated the number one contender and defeated the champion. Cesaro very dominant, so that is a good thing. Plan build off the the whole SmackDown series with the great young talent, the talent that deserves to get pushes for like war titles. For example, Ziggler, Cesaro, Owens. Owens is getting some of a push, and um. As back if you ever does come to the main roster, but as back current New Year Water Champion. First ever Water Champion for SmackDown as well. So yep, he's been holding that title since week six. And he hasn't defended it since week six. Cause of all the build up and stuff like that. And the whole preview schedule. Stuff like that. So Yeah, but he will defend it. For the first time ever on week thirteen, shortly, and only seven weeks, seven episodes of SmackDown after. He won it in the first man pay per view. No surrender. Going back to the action here now. Cesaro nailing that power drive to Kingston. Land him right in his head, bending that neck. Cesaro picks up a victory. And Antonio Cesaro gets the victory here on SmackDown. Hell of a matchup. That was great. And so, I'm currently legend. I'm. Blech. Can't talk. I'm currently listening to Edge's theme song in the background on Spotify. I swear, this gets copyrighted because the background music and because I just need to think and also because I really just don't want to be doing this voiceover. I just feel too lazy. I really do just feel too lazy. I'm just going to close the computer. There, I closed the laptop there. Not going to be risking any of this. Can't underestimate background stuff. Anyway, third, my main qualification matchup. Kota Ibushi, which we now have changed his hair to the type of hairstyle he currently has. Well, then again, the other hair that he had all generated in the game, it was somewhat accurate. But, like, Kota Ibushi's hair is similar to my hair. Not not really. Because it's like mine is a little bit wild up and stuff. But Kota Ibushi's hair is somewhat similar. Mine is black. His is, like, brown, though. So, yeah. But it's somewhat similar. Not fully similar. So, don't think that's my hairstyle. But it is like a Three's Grace Adam Gontier 2006 type um, hairstyle. Who one cannot type it, it exactly as that. For the most part. Anyway, so this is the third one in qualification matchup. Fourth one, which will be the fourth matchup, is going to be. Not going to say it. Have it written down right in front of me. Fifth one, Chamber vs. Champion matchup. Ask Black, who will be defending his world hotel. Against Dolph Ziggler at the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. That should be a good matchup. That's not going to be the main event, though. I was about to say that should be a hell of a main event. It's not going to. The Money in the Bank ladder match is... Just so we won't have any cash-ins on the same night. Because I don't want to quite jump to conclusions. Or should we? Like, put the World Title matchup. Because depending on... Well, we already got Cesaro. We already got Small Joe. And they, ironically enough, we put them in the rivalry to begin SmackDown. I see right there, well, Robert Roode, I mean, not Robert Roode, James Storm, James Storm, um, nailing that eye of the storm, essentially, that's what, that's what he looks like, but, like, his standing partner is Robert Roode, so, yeah, which is why I confused him for a second, I by Roode, but, anyway, and now, James Storm off the ropes, nailing that splash, somewhat, anyway, fine, screw it, I'm just gonna spin a whole random wheel off camera, whether if it's going to be um me making the Money in the Bank ladder match the last matchup or the world title match the main event. Not fully sure. So far we got Cesaro, so far we got Small Joe in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Cesaro and and Joe, they've actually were in a rivalry to kick things off on SmackDown when we when we started this numerous mode series for SmackDown. For SmackDown aspect of things. One of the first rivals was Cesaro and Samoa Joe. And now Cody Bush on count nine here. He's struggling. He can't even get up. And James Storm. Well, he weakened Cody Bush enough on the outside to make Bushi struggle to even get up. To even crawl as well. Bushi having no more left in him. And so Seth Rollins 
Kobushi's former rival, definitely having him, Saffron's. While Kobushi did defeat Saffron's at the No Surren preview, dating back to week six to end off the rivalry. Um, they did. We did continue the whole cruiserweight title tournament, the eight man title tournament, to the to determine the first ever cruiserweight champion. Saffron's did defeat Kobushi in the semifinals when they met again in week eight. So yeah, I believe it was week eight. Was it? I'm not sure. Or week seven. Shortly after. So yeah. Anyway, Kashuska Kata and the Ryback. I don't know what I'm saying, the Ryback. It sounds more intimidating, but anyway, it's just Ryback. Um, so Okada. He's not he's not been having the best of luck against Big Show. He's not been having the best of luck here in Year's Mode so far. Which is very surprising. Um he did pick up a win against Big Show, I believe, in their last matchup. They've had like three or four matches. I think three to be fair. For those first two, Big Show absolutely demolished him. Uh, for the third matchup, I believe it was back and forth. And for the fourth one, I believe Akata won. And if there was only three, well then for the third one, then Akata won. And it was back and forth for somewhat. So anyway, this is going to be the fourth and final matchup for the Money Bank qualifications. We shall have two more Money Bank qualifications. In Smackdown Week 13, after this, we have the main event champion versus champion, Mr. Perfect, of course. Won that whole battle royal. What, how many men was it? It was an 18-man battle royal. Six men from Raw, six men from SmackDown, six men from ECW for the NXT Championship. Final two men in the matchup was, ironically enough, two from SmackDown, Eddie Guerrero, and Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect ended up winning that battle royal, became NXT Champion. Took the NXT title to SmackDown. It will win SmackDown either way because the final two were Guerrero. Well, A Guerrero specifically. And Mr. Perfect. Then, ironically enough, in the next episode of Superstars, which was episode two, we had like a whole fatal five way between two SmackDown Superstars, two Raw Superstars, and one ECW Superstar. I specifically remember one ECW, that one ECW Superstar being Finn Balor because I didn't want anyone else from ECW to like try and hopefully win the NXT title if they do win that no one can tear matchup. Well, at least no one I think of, because, well, at least no one I think that I'd want to, to be the no one contender for a champion, and hopefully hope, hopefully win the towel, if they could, at least at that time. So, yeah, anyway, now, Kyle off the ropes and completely missing. Ryback, remember, he's been very, very dominant. He's had many great back-and-forth matches with Sigler. He absolutely demolished Sigler in their first meeting on week four, in which we did have Ryback ended up defeating Sigler. But Ziggler, he kept kicking out, and he kept... Well, anyway, now Ryback with the show shot out of nowhere. Okada no-selling that. Oh, uh, what the hell? <laughs> Okada no-sold Ryback's finisher. Oh, man. That, that's fine. That's fine. No-sold the show shock. And Ryback, just gonna say this is what you get for not selling my move. And Okada... This is what we mean by Okada is more super than Super Cena. And that's saying something. Oh God! Kicking out of everything here, never gonna lose his, never gonna lose his resiliency, is he? But he is stumbling down. He is now feeling the effects. The big guy, Ryback, on the roll here. Alright. So anyway, Superstars is next. Oh yeah. So anyway, Child Grail for SmackDown. He did win that whole Fatal Five way, which made you know a different Guerrero besides Eddie. Eddie Guerrero was super close to winning the title, but now Child Guerrero has a no one contender's shot. And he'll face up against Mr. Perfect. See if he could defeat Mr. Perfect, unlike his uncle, Eddie. I remember when I was low. I remember when I was low. I used to think that um, Travel and like Travel and Eddie were like actually bars, somewhat. Although that was just 2005, and I was like one, but I don't know why. But some way, somehow, believed that. Or I'm, or I'm making stuff up here, and I don't even know I am. I don't know. Um. So let's see. SmackDown Week 13. So, fine. I just checked the match card. We have some velocity matches. I just checked Raw and East Stories match card. We got the metal. We got the heat pre-show matches as well for those respective brands. Um, so, screw it. We'll add in the pre-shows into the regular episodes. I guess. Uh, should we? I don't want to. Because... I don't know, I'll figure something out because I already have some specific stuff going on for these match cards. Now that I'm checking, I could bar it to simulate or like at least show highlights, I guess. But then if the highlights are like not long enough, I guess, then that won't fully work out. 
Unless I show like little tiny snippets, I guess, of like the ending of the match. I guess that'll fully work out. Not not fully sure. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Eh. Just. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, no idea. So, anyway, Mind Bank qualifiers. These are two qualifiers, which will be on next episode of SmackDown. I might as well just leak it for you. Or just say the four participants and not say who who's gonna be facing who. Anyway, I'm gonna say it's not in particular order, just so you guys won't know. Or it could be in particular order. Who knows? I'll give you a hint. One of them is gonna be in the triple threat matchup. So yeah, which is gonna make it more difficult for you guys to guess. The one-on-one -on -one matchup and the triple threat. You guys could comment down. I highly doubt that you guys are gonna comment because, to be fair, who watches this? Anyway, mind bank qualifier number five. To determine the fifth participant, and well, well, no, I was about to say the whole actual match. No, fine. The five participants who are going to be across those two matches to see who becomes the fifth and sixth participant will be Eddie Guerrero, so he'll have a chance to like be as successful as Chavo so far. Jay Lethal, which will be his second matchup in numerous mode. His first matchup was against Goldust. That was his debut matchup. That was on week 11 or week 10. So, yeah. Hound his other matchup. Um, also, Jinder Maha. He came up short in winning the United States title. So, yeah. Um, Robert Roode, the tag partner of James Storm, a.k.a. Bobby Roode, to be fair. But keeping as Robert Roode since they're technically still in the tag team. And for most of Beard Money Inc., Bobby Roode was known as Robert Roode. So, we're going to keep it as that. And... The Ace of Japan, first ever United States Champion, Hiroshi Tanahashi, who won back his title twice from Austin Aries via countout. And then it took a triple threat matchup with Austin Aries and Jack Swagger, a debut in Jack Swagger, on week 8, which was the Life of Number Street pay-per-view, first matchup to kick off show, no SmackDown, United States Championship 3, right? Jack Swagger, of course, answered the open challenge. Austin Aries was already guaranteed the slot. And Ryback picks up a victory against Okada. Okada not doing too well against these, like, monstrous big guys. Surprising. Very, very surprising. Not, didn't do too well against Big Show. But then again, Ryback, he's, uh, he has been more dominant than Big Show. So, but Okada, he, he was resilient. He was resilient. So, there we go. Just got kind of sadly gone. Um, now, if anything, I didn't really care who won that matchup, but I actually would have been sad if Ryback lost as well, because I don't know, I kind of set myself up for like a mental state of sadness. <laughs> because I actually do want both of them being in my Magnet Lair match. And to be fair, every man that I have like qualified in these matches and who have lost and who have won, I really don't care who it is, to be fair. But anyway, so yeah. So, one of those one main qualification matches, the qual the sixth qualifier, which will be the second matchup on SmackDown on the next episode. That's gonna be a triple threat, and then the first qualifier, which is gonna be the first matchup of the night, and the fifth qualifier from the main bank matter match. It's gonna be a one one matchup. Third matchup, fourth matchup, fifth matchup, stuff like that. Then after that we end off the show to be fair. Have a couple promos, a couple segments for that as well. Scattered throughout, I guess. Like I said, Velocity, we, we haven't bothered to do any promos or segments here. For example, we did like a whole Seth Rollins heelish promo in the last episode of SmackDown or something like that. And if not, what well, we did on week 11. No, week 11 was the last episode one I'm talking about, so yeah, we did do it on week 11. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's like it's taken us two weeks to pull out like one episode specifically. Of of a certain brand, I guess, because it is it, it, it's taking us a while. Now, if we could keep this at a weekly rate, I actually don't want to. I actually want to pull off at least like two episodes of like, for example, let's say we could pull off two episodes of Raw, ECW, SmackDown, and Superstars, and depending or not, pull off at least one pay per view if we could, depending on where week we go to. At any given time, probably could be. I don't know, a year from now or something, that if we continue this into a series 2, which we probably will, but definitely have a way shorter roster. Or fix that problem later on. But anyway. And now I see right there, well, that, that jump in 
flow through Bulldog by Sierra Next Counter by Dragon Screw by Mr. Perfect. Your NXT champion. Well, as Black Heat completely countered that double foot stomp, sort of. And now, punched right to the face. And nope, oh, gonna get gut wrenched for his troubles to a shoulder breaker. And that will be a rope break. Chow Grail, no one contender. For the NXT Tell. Definitely watching on. Still so off Ziggler. No one contender for the world's heavyweight championship that that man, Alistair Black, holds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, imagine here, imagine, well, of course, Mr. Perfect, he's more skilled, so he's not a rookie, so he doesn't deserve to have the NXT title. But the NXT title is going to be for, it could be for anyone, to be fair. It, it could be for rookies. It could be for, like, the in-betweeners, I guess. And it could also be for... Old timers, part timers as well. No, we cannot part timers, not part timers. We're sure as hell not gonna have no damn part timers. So once we make Brock Lesnar debut on Raw, which he's still being hyped up for, whom we can't know he's not. We only hyped him up like two or three times in like two or three episodes of Raw out of 12. But we have talked about him coming to Raw sometimes. Sometimes we have. We still don't know when he's gonna come to the Raw roster. Where he's gonna come when I feel like it, and when I feel like the time is right for Pacific storylines for some Pacific wrestlers that find an interesting storyline to do. I guess, and we still need that Mystery Bull Club member to, to come over to Raw. We don't know who from Bull Club it could be. It could be people that breathe air. I, I was I was gonna say some options there, but I feel like the options could have given it away. Especially for the tone or the order I set it in, so I didn't want to do that. Anyway, now I asked back where the champion missing that moonsault to Mr. Perfect. Now, Perfect trying to get the upper hand, nailing that side rushing leg sweep, and now, oh, that reverse, uh, that reverse elbow drop. Two ass to Black, going close to his side, and now, nails, oh, never mind! As to Black catching him in midair. As to Black saying, nah, you're good. Saying, nah, you're good, bro. Catching him with that Ace Crusher. Also known as Fawn Face Buster, but still. That, that whole Ace Crusher right there. Or Face Cutter. There's multiple different names. We're not going to call it the RKO. So, live with it. If you only know that as the RKO, well then... Okay then, but I know it as different Pacific moves. As the Black taking him back inside the ring. Now, that was a hell... Off a counter right there. That was beautiful. Nice way to counter the drop kick. W D thirteen catch finisher styles. And now well somewhat getting that moons out. W D twelve as well. Some some other games as well, to be fair. Some other W D games. THQ. Ukes. The W D two K games have gone sluggish. THQ ones have been better. I don't know why I know this. I played a very little amount. But okay. Anyway. Mr. Perfect. Getting back inside a ring now, realizing that, well, he could win this match by count out, but doesn't want, I don't know, well, try and at least catch Breer, at least ask the Black, in case you guys are wondering, ask the Black, he is, he is a tweener, he is a face, he's not a face, but he is not a heel, he is a person that breathes air, so he is a tweener, Dolph Ziggler, he's a face, Ryback's a heel, Stuff like that. See right there, another flow while we're jumping. Bulldog, nice way to transition into just a beautiful, absolutely beautiful crossface. To be fair, that 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 was a that was a pretty nice transition. I like that, but now nice, nice nightmare. But Mr. Perfect into the pin only a two count. And now well, Black, that backwards and vertical time drop knee right to the butt instead of groin. And so, now now pretty nice name. Necessary. As Black, well, trying to decide on what he could do here. I was guessing he, he's going to jump off the top rope, but not fully. Well, he didn't bother to try. And so now Mr. Perfect. With the neck. As Black, and well, there goes Perfect. Again, sent flying. Off that ring apron. I'm enjoying this matchup so far. So, we do have... Well, I have written down all the championship title histories. We've had, the well, the most title history most title changes have been for the ECW championship where we've already had three champions in just 12 weeks but yeah pretty much it not eh. otherwise for that we've only had like crowned new champions or like two title changes um so we do have a whole lot of best matches of the series so far 
we have two best matches of the series in week 12. I'll let you guys figure that one out. You guys could watch. I'll give you a hint. Of course, it's not the pre-shows. Heat, no. Metal, no. Velocity, no. Superstars, we don't know yet. But so far, we have had two great matches that could qualify for the best match of the series category. One of them are from one brand. The other one is from a different brand. You guys can figure it out. You guys can watch Raw. You guys can watch SmackDown. You guys can watch ECW. And, well, if we add one in from Superstars, which we're probably not. But if we do, you guys can watch Superstars, I guess. Also, because the main event in Superstars is going to be a great main event. I'm not going to give away any spoilers. I'm not going to even say what brand is going to have it. We don't know what kind of matchup it's going to be. But I'll give you, well, it's going to be... I'm not going to give you a hint, but... Let's just say it's gonna be great. It's gonna it's gonna be good. But then again, I say that about most main events. To be fair, in here, mostly because this is like fancy booking. For what I'll do, whom can not really, somewhat I don't know, or. But sometimes, well, the AI does decide who wins stuff. So I guess. So sometimes it won't fully work out well. But okay, where? Anyway, now both these men, there's fine on the outside here. This matchup's been going on for a while here. Let's see, 11 minutes and 11 seconds. Well, at least to the, um, to the game's clock. Even though this is usually like 2 or 3 minutes, perhaps 1 minute more, when it's recording sometimes. So yeah, this game clock doesn't go as that accurate, but does it just goes a little bit. A little bit under, not that much. But then again, it doesn't really matter, because then it adds up all the time of the entrances as well. So then it's like, it could be more accurate than what it is, I'm not fully sure. Anyway, now her crying for Mr. Perfect to ask the black back black fawn going back inside the ring there. After that, that was pretty nice. Multiple drop kicks and now Mr. Perfect. Two drop kicks to back head almost had a victory there. Imagine if that was it. At this point Aster Black, he's struggling here. Imagine if Mr. Perfect is to defeat Aster Black here. Mr. Perfect, of course, the NXT champion, so he is lower ranked than WWE champ well not WWE champion, WWE champion. The Dodi Tell is on Raw, and the current Dodi champion is Bobby Lashley. He'll be defending that against AJ Styles at the Raw exclusive Sealed Fate pay per view, which is going to be the upcoming pay per view, and which is going to be showcased after Superstars. And well, there we go. <laughs> Not able to call the action right there, but Mr. Perfect gets the victory. As Black then he dropkick him after that, but Mr. Perfect just fell down, sold it. Like he like broke off his kneecaps off the drop kick, something like that. But anyway, Mr. Perfect picks up a victory. The NXT champion picking up victory against the Warner champion. Now, if Mr. Perfect is, and that's a, and that is could also be translated into an if he does retain his towel. Well, if he does actually lose his NXT championship to Child Grow, he could probably qualify for that Warner hotel that Ashley Black has. Unless it black is to lose it to Ziggler. But then again, Cesaro has defeated both number one contender Dolph Ziggler and both champion Aster Black. Of course, he did defeat Aster Black in a non tile contest, but Cesaro, he has proven that he deserves to be a contender. Although he has actually lost to Biggie on Superstars Episode 2, I believe. But that was before he actually had those matches against Ziggler and Black. And he did defeat Joe in their rivalry before, I believe. So yeah. Or did Joe defeat him? I'm not, sh I'm not sure. Anyway, that was it. Thank you guys for watching this episode of SmackDown, New Year's Mode, episode, well, week 12, episode 12, essentially. Next episode will be Superstars episode 4. That should be good. And then after that, Raw's exclusive sealed tape review. Eight matches on the card. And we'll bring out the match card once we're close to the preview. Well, that'll be the next film. Well, that'll be like the last film before the extra preview. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Catch you on the next one. Goodbye. And I'm not sure if I'm going to upload this on the Friday or if I'm going to upload this on Saturday. You guys are watching this either on Friday or Saturday. Whatever day it is, then that's when I upload it. <sighs> Goodbye.